What's going on everyone? Thanks so much for tuning in to another video here. For those of you who don't know, I participated in Rev Garage's cold call knockout a few weeks ago hosted by Justin Michael. And in this video, I wanted to go over my cold calls, not only to for you to kind of see my reaction as I do these cold calls, but also an opportunity to reflect. What could I have done better? What did I do good in? And furthermore, again, I think the best part of listening to your cold calls after you've done them is that you get a different perspective on what you said, how you sounded like, could you have asked better questions? And so this is as much of a learning opportunity for me as it is for you. Doing cold calls is absolutely difficult. It's hard. It's like eating glass, like Patrick Joyce said. And so um, for those of you out there listening who may feel like you don't know how to call cold call or it's something that you're trying to push through and get better at, it's a never ending process. And so uh, again, this video, this exercise here is just to reflect and give some feedback. I'd love to hear your feedback down below as well. We used a tool called Connect and Sell, and this tool is an auto dialer. It's a mass blaster, so we're calling hundreds of people. Or you know, basically during this period, we called about three to four hundred people in an hour. We connected with. Let me see here. We had about. 14 cold calls so we made 14 connects so it's a really powerful tool for anyone who doesn't have cold call experience if you're just manually cranking out calls you would probably get 14 connects in a week if you're doing like 50 to 100 aisles a day and so connect and sell really does a good job of like expediting that process and getting their slogan is you know getting a week's worth of connects in a day and so uh, I'll fast forward to each of the calls, but you'll know right when I'm connected with an individual, it'll go something like bloop, 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 bloop. And so that just tells me that we're connected with someone. I go straight into my pitch, which is just to inform them that we're on a recorded line here. And I use this as a platform to educate people on Elvira Media, of my digital marketing services. So would love to hear your feedback, but nonetheless, let's hop into it here. To the point, just continue to ask questions. That's what I've learned. Well, hey, this is Mateo from Elvira Media on the recorded line here. Do you have a few minutes to chat about marketing on TikTok by chance? No, I'm sorry, Don. The topic of the I'm running a little bit actually for my talk. No worries, sir. Is there perhaps like a good email or perhaps someone else that you might recommend speaking to at Future Vault regarding content? Nope, not right now. It would be me. Uh, do you me email? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, is it michael.bradley at futurevaultinc.com? You got it. Awesome. Hey, appreciate your time, Michael. Thanks so much. No worries. I'm good. Bye. Sure, what you Interesting call. So, this is a common objection I feel like people get. They're in a meeting, right? Of course, people will default to things. Once they know that they're on a on a phone call with like a cold caller or someone of that nature, it's easy to like, you know, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm walking in a meeting or yeah, I'm busy, something. So I think it's important to assume this as an objection that people will, you know, say to you that they are walking into a meeting. So uh, being able to jump ahead of that or be like, no worries, asking a question immediately. Of course, we're not going to be able to get everyone, but... This is a common objection and I was able to get his email at the very least. So I would say that is still a win. But again, how can we push through this objection of I'm going to hop into a meeting? Because most likely that's what a lot of people are going to be saying moving forward. So let's go to cold call number two. Hey, this is Mateo from Elvira Media on a recorded line here. Do you have a few minutes to chat about marketing on TikTok? No, I don't. Thank you. Bye. No worries, man. Are you usually the best person to speak to about anything content related? No, oh, man. Find it. So they hung up. That's to be expected. Again, people, when they, when they realize that they're on a cold call with a salesperson, um, that's, you know, usually a red flag for someone to hook up. But being able to ask a question or even follow up with an email is really important as well. So let's go to cold call number three, which is 951. Are you at Indeed Samurai Best? No. Hi, this is Mateo from Elvira Media on a recorded line here. Do you have a few minutes to chat about marketing on TikTok? No, I don't. Um, I'm not a marketing person for our company, just so you know. Um, Sorry to hear that. Is there someone I guess you recommend speaking to over at security? Um, not right now. I, I, I'm, I'm in a meeting right now, so you're going to have to try. Uh, just, um, um, I, I can't talk right now. I've got, I've got people sitting on this. Uh, just call me later, okay? Oh, call ended. Not a bad call. Again, we're assuming that objection. People, once they realize they're on the phone call with a cold caller, they'll, they're they going to default to, uh, I'm in a meeting. You could clearly hear in his voice he was in a rush or he was busy or he definitely didn't want to talk. 
Um, this is a really good opportunity to use what I call the answer and ask technique. It's answering their question, but following up with another question to keep the conversation moving. The person who is asking the questions is in control of the conversation. So being able to follow up with questions um, is a good way to get people talking and, and asking. So I asked him in this instance, are you the best person to speak to about social media marketing or content marketing? Obviously he was busy, but I think a, a next course of action would be to follow up with an email or connect with him on LinkedIn and see if we can pick up this conversation again in the future, because he, he literally told me, call me, call me again, or call me later. So if he's giving you the runway, go for it, follow up. I think I feel like half the battle is following up with people. So let's go to cold call number four at 452, 1452. Cool, um, I'm really curious about like, closing the deal. Hi, this is Mateo from Elvira Media on the recording line here. Do you have an idea of who manages the content strategy? Where? Uh, for connecting, is this Judd by chance? Yeah, that's me. Hey Judd, sorry, I'm just curious if you had a few moments to talk a little bit more about video content marketing. Are you usually the best person to speak to about that? Listen, I'm a good person, but I don't think it's a, I don't, I don't, I don't have a need. So, and, and so I don't think it should be a reduced ballpark on my account to chat about it. No worries, I guess, is there someone else that you recommend speaking to that might handle anything no. about content marketing? No, I can be going with this, and I can be going with it, and just be really honest with you. Like, I have a need, but I don't have resources now, and I do have a plan to get it placed. So, I, I, I just, uh, I'm not gonna invest in any vendor to help me out to do it. So, I'm probably just gonna be for you. No worries. Sorry, you said you had like a need. Were you just referring to just marketing or organic content marketing, or just kind of a lot of like? I'm not a good fit for you. So, you know, I want to save both some time on this, and I'm sure you get some you know, rundown questions to qualify me. That's cool, but I'm just not gonna be a good fit. No worries, sir. Um, would it be okay if I sent you a Venn diagram on just some platforms that we've seen high value on repurposing content for? Would that be okay? No, that's fine. Oof, I think it doesn't get much tougher than that. Um, he was stomping his heels, making it really difficult. He even said to me, like, look, I, I'm a nice guy. So I think it's important here to, like, stay calm and collected. I think it's easy to let that frustrate you and just, like, ugh, want to, like, respond with, with energy or, like, being really fierce. But I think it's really important to, like, remain calm in your voice and your tone and again just follow up with questions and he eventually even said on this call like i have a need but so like unpacking that further and really keeping your listening ears open and being like okay well he literally said i have a need but follow up with that question hey you said you have a need what does that mean of course a, a large percentage of the time people will probably will will not answer that but like if you can just follow up with questions that's a really good way to just continue to ask and potentially you know move the the conversation along so let's see what the next cold call has in mind for us 2210 22, 10. By using visuals. Hi, this is Mateo from a wider media on recorded line here. Do you know who the best person to speak to is about content strategy at Affiliates? No, I don't actually. No worries, sir. I guess, do you mind if I ask what your role is over at Affiliates? Do you manage anything related to like LinkedIn or TikTok or any video marketing by chance? Oh, call me. All right, next call. All right, so as you can see here, it's time to eat some glass right now. Um, I think if you are okay with the rejection and are comfortable with getting a no, to me, I, I feel like just because I can't get them to stay on the phone with me doesn't mean that the conversation is completely done because I'm going to follow up with an email. I'm going to connect with them on LinkedIn. It's going to be my goal for them to know who I am, especially as a digital marketer, right? I'm... I'm responsible for bringing eyeballs, attention, and awareness. If, if I'm doing a good job as a digital marketer, you should know about me, not only just through a cold call, but the platforms that I'm, I'm preaching about you being on. And so you have to look at this call as like the first step in a long process. I think, again, going back to the, the, the game plan and strategy is really about following up with people and being consistent about that. I think people will really appreciate it. Let's go ahead and head to the next call here, which is 2346. Yeah, you're calling marketing, which I like. Hi, this is Mateo from Elvira Media on a recorded line here. Do you know who the best person to speak to about content marketing at Outcome by Chance? 
Oh, you know what? You reached my cell phone, um, but I would recommend that you just email marketing at Outcome Health and we can help you out there. Awesome. Thank you so much. And Jennifer, quick question for you. Are there any platforms in specific that you guys are leveraging from a video marketing perspective? Are you guys on TikTok or just any platforms that are ideal or that you're testing out at the moment? No, we have chosen not to pursue TikTok. Um, it's just not part of our social strategy at the moment. Um, and as far as like other video platforms, we have a YouTube page, some of our content lives on Vimeo. Um, we do have like an in-house production team that um, oh. does develop a lot of the content, um, the video content that lives across our point of share platform. Um, and so that's really the priority when it comes to like our content development is on the content for our platform. Got it. Okay. Do you also have a dedicated team that's responsible for repurposing content on other platforms as well, maybe outside of the production aspect? Um, not really. Like, those assets will get, like, resized for social, and then, like, you know, alter them across, like, you know, Instagram or other platforms, but it's not like we have a dedicated team that's solely focused on, like, sort of thing and it. Got it. And I guess, like, outside of videos, are you testing with other mediums of content, maybe, like, written and picture content as well? Yeah, I mean, we do have a blog site, so we do have some, like, long-form content there, um, and then, um, we do, you know, with, like, all of our social content, we all do, um, you know, static imagery, if we might be, since we don't have a video. Okay. Well, would it be safe to at least just send a little bit more info about what we do here at Elbire Media? Again, I just pretty much just yeah. repurpose and just kind of help you maximize your, your content strategy, get those eyeballs as large as possible. Would that be okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, marketing at Outcome is the preferred um, inbox for that. Awesome. Well, I will definitely send over a nice Venn diagram for you, and I really appreciate your time, Denver. Excellent. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Now, all success on calls don't look just like booked meetings. I think this is considered success. She basically tried to shut me off and be like, hey, just send an email to marketing. No worries. Here I am following up with question, 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 question. Um, and again, even if someone tells you no, ask them why. She was like, eh, TikTok's not really a part of my strategy. I should have done a good job or I should have asked. Do you mind if you clarify why you feel TikTok is not a good fit? Get people talking about why. Why they feel that this isn't a good fit or why they feel like it's following up with a question but really unpacking and understanding why they believe what they believe in the digital marketing space we're always educating people about why they should be doing what they're doing or why they haven't been doing what they're doing why are your paper mailers not converting or why haven't you been producing video content why it's such like an, a simple but like powerful question why and i feel like i should have done a better job of unpacking maybe why she felt TikTok is not a good fit because that tells me she's considered it or thought about it in the past but she feels like it's not a good fit and maybe it's not a good fit and maybe she might be able to give me insight that I didn't consider or pursue in the past, like a different perspective. So let me know what you guys think. Let's go to the next call here, which is 3113. Blue. Hi, this is Mateo from Elvira Media on a recorded line here. Do you have an idea of who manages the content strategy at the moment by chance? The which strategy? Uh, the video content strategy by chance? Uh, multiple people on the team. We, we have a process and we have a group that we use currently. Nice. I'm happy to hear that. Uh, quick question for you, Kelly. Do you have a dedicated internal team that's responsible for repurposing content on several platforms as well? Or do you have an idea of how that looks like? Yeah, I am the content strategist and uh, yeah, we have a strategy and a plan. Nice. Do you mind if I ask what platforms you have been finding a lot of success on? Are you leveraging TikTok at all, or what are your thoughts on TikTok? Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm getting ready for a meeting in 10 minutes, so I, I don't have any time this morning. No, and no one on TikTok. It's really not from a business standpoint, not our area. Interesting. Okay. But thank you for um, the call. No worries. Would, I, would be cool if I shot you a Venn diagram on... Oh, uh, damn, call it. So she hung up. Again, another example of someone who's who obviously has thought about it, but it's not a good fit. She was obviously in a rush. Again, defaults into that same objection. Oh, I have to hop into a meeting, which might be the case, might not. But again, based on the data and sample set that I've received so far, can I write down the objections that I commonly receive so that I know going forward that 90% chance that someone's going to ask me this? We've already been through a couple of calls here and how many people have told us or told me that they're in a meeting. So that tells me that odds are one of these cold calls in the future, they're going to say that objection. So how can I get ahead about, how can I get ahead of that objection? Maybe I might enter a call and be like, Hey, I know you might be about to head into a meeting here. Do you have a few minutes to chat about content marketing? Now, did you see what I did there? It's a technique that I learned from KD Kevin Dorsey. It's called eight miling. It's, it's taking the objection out of your mouth before you use it against me. So again, it's just understanding what are people saying to me in, in the course of the sample set of these past couple calls and how can I get ahead of that? How can I get ahead and be like, hey, I know you might be hopping in a, in a meeting here. If they would have said that, now you've literally taken that out of their mouth and they can't even use that against you. So just some things to consider. 
We are at 32. Let's go to 34 is the next call. Cold call number eight. Let me know what you guys think. How am I doing, good or bad? R&B and rap like Love NWA. Hi, this is Mateo from Elvira Media on a recorded line here. Do you have an idea of who manages the video content marketing at Edge by chance? Video content marketing in what way? Um, you know, just, yeah, just like posting content on LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram, repurposing across YouTube. Is that something that's usually in your wheelhouse here, Nick? Yeah, it currently goes through there. Uh, it'll probably change uh, in, in the near future. Uh, to uh, somebody focused on digital con content, but yeah, currently it's that. And um, we do in-house creation and also work with a company, Rapid, uh, for future. Could you sort of spark me here as far as how you are repurposing that content on other platforms as well, or how that process looks like currently? Is that handled by both terms? Um, yeah, re repurposing for ads. I mean, most of our stuff is focused into uh, LinkedIn, because we're B2B. Uh, today mm -hmm. and those groups that are there and uh it's it's also repurposed and used as conversion assets that are uh, moderated and tracked through an embedded hubspot mm -hmm. which the, the back the integrated back end is better figured with well the standard is now bigger uh, but you can use better tools with the uh, and others i i know I've, I've, a lot of people have mixed reviews on this but just curious what are your thoughts on marketing on tiktok are you familiar with that uh, one yeah 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 uh, i would say I, i'd say it's actually really emerged for the bd place for us uh, for the kind of folks that we're trying to reach. Um, I'm, I'm most surprised <laughs> by the rise of Instagram stories. Um, but it looks like they finally found the spot. <laughs> uh, so, I, so, I, so I know that that is you know, got us in intrigue. Uh, but even mm -hmm. while we have actually in Twitter and Facebook, mm -hmm. they're just not the primary source. We're better spending every dollar in, in uh, LinkedIn. Have you checked out anything on Instagram Reels at all? Like basically the TikTok version of Instagram, sort of that like micro video platform? Have you guys dabbled into that yet? Have not. Got it. Would it be cool at least to send a little bit more information of how we can perhaps help you repurpose across multiple video platforms? Is Nick Scott Brigman at Edge Technologies good enough for you? Yes, and if you don't like to type, type a lot, you can just use edgeti.com. Edgeti.com. You got it. Appreciate your time this morning, Nick. We've, we've moved to our shorter URL. Yay! Only took a year. Congratulations. I really appreciate your time, Nick. Hope you have a great day. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Hey, I want to say this is probably the best call I've had simply because. We took a negative, turned it into a positive. He gave us a lot of in, important information that they he really liked reels and that they're more of a B2B facing. And, you know, being able to have your elevator pitch like this, right? Like, well, what do you do or what do you mean by that? And then I go into like, oh, well, yeah, we, re, we help repurpose content across multiple platforms. And then I follow up with a question. I think being able to have a quick little elevator pitch of, you know, what your services are and then a follow up question. I think this is a really great call because he was happy. He laughed on the call. He gave me his email. He even confirmed the email, which tells me he's not just telling me, yeah, to get off the phone. So this tells me, again, this is a warm lead. This is something that I could follow up with and call him again and send him an email and connect with him on LinkedIn because this was the way I opened the door. Let me know what you guys think. Let's head to the next call here, which is 4247. A vertical that a lot of people don't, might not be aware of, as opposed to like jumping to work for Dong. So, I don't know. Hi, this is Mateo from Elvira Media on a recorded line here. Do you have an idea who manages the video content strategy at PDI? I'm sorry, you have the wrong number. Uh, this is uh, Nadine. Uh, she hung up. All right, she hung up. Uh, to be expected. Let's go to the next call 4325. My mom is also a school teacher, but a preschool teacher. What, what, um, what grade did she teach? Hi, this is Mateo from Elvira Media on a recorded line here. Do you have an idea of who manages the video marketing over at Genesis by chance? I do, yes. It's, uh, it's on my team. Oh, nice. Uh, do you mind if I ask what platforms you guys have been finding a lot of success on, if you are on TikTok or mostly LinkedIn at the moment? Um, so we have an in-house video team, and we're a technology company, so we create videos um, from brand awareness to products to stories and so on. Um, I mean, the videos are shared through all social media platforms, if that's what you're asking. Got it. Yeah, I was more or less curious how the content is sort of being repurposed and distributed on other platforms as well, like perhaps YouTube or um, like TikTok. Do you have an in-house team that's responsible for repurposing as well? Yeah, I mean, we have, I do the paid media buys for brand, and then we have another team that does paid media buys, um, and we have some agencies that take them to market. Got it. And I guess maybe outside of those verticals, are there any sort of types of content that you feel have been really successful for you, mostly videos or written or picture content as well? Just following up with questions. Um, what do you mean by picture content? You know, just like picture graphics or taking an idea that you might have done in a blog post and representing it through a picture graphic, like a Venn diagram or something like that. Have you sort of dabbled into just like repurposing existing content in different visual mediums per se? So I don't run a content team. Um, I don't manage content development. So if it was, you know, an infographic or a blog that could change into something else, like that's a whole other team. And that's Got all tied into the virus journey. Got it. I guess is there someone that you recommend on that team to speak to or perhaps send an email? Um, I mean, I can't give you emails over the phone. If you just go on LinkedIn and look up, you know, the content managers for Genesis, you'll easily find them on LinkedIn. Got it. Is there like a first name I should look out for or maybe a first letter you might be willing to share? So are you, are you a salesperson, obviously, and you're trying to figure out how to 
I mean, like, what do you do? You always tell me anything about your company. Yeah, so um, my name is Mateo. I'm calling with Alvira Media. I recently quit my sales job a couple of months ago to start my own content repurposing agency. So right now we're just working with several SaaS companies, individual consultants, small businesses, helping them get on social platforms like TikTok, LinkedIn, Instagram Reels. Just wanted to reach out to see if there's any way that I can perhaps help you as well. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's like, I mean, we're a big company, right? We're 6,000 global employees, so there's a social media team that handles all the content decisions for Twitter and TikTok and Instagram and LinkedIn. There's a content team that's developing content for um, the virus journey and ABM marketing. There's me and the brand team who do all the creative work and the paid media for brand and the video work. Um, so it's pretty diverse. Um, but if you can go on LinkedIn and do searches on job titles, you'll be able to find everyone because, you know, they're all identified on there. Sweet. Well, I'll definitely connect with you on LinkedIn and share with you any insights that I find, but I really appreciate your time and patience, AJ. Yeah, good luck. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. One of my favorite calls here, just because she stayed on the phone. She even asked me, tell me about your company. And she even asked picture content. So this tells me that, um, this tells me, and I'm even starting to realize this right now, like who is my ideal profile? Who is my ideal customer profile? Is it large corporations that already have content teams? Maybe, but it, it seems to me that she was basically educating me that like, hey, look, we're a large company. We already have an in, in-house team that handles this. So maybe this might not be the best fit. So looking back, I'm just like, hmm, who is an ideal customer fit for me? Who Who is an ideal fit? Is it is it a young startup that doesn't have a full-on marketing team? Is it an established company that just wants to focus on TikTok? I'm not quite sure. But this is data and insight that I'm getting firsthand from CMOs and marketers that is probably equally as valuable as a meeting that I can set with them. Let me know what you guys think. Let's go to the next call, 5057. to knock out these calls when I have you in between them. I feel like every company needs to just hire this material from Elvira Media on a recorded line here. Do you have an idea of who manages the video content marketing at Covectra by chance? And we're not in the market, thank you. I appreciate it. No worries. <laughs> All right. All okay. right. Nice and sweet. Uh, next one is 5248. Well, I drank some green tea this morning. Fingers crossed. Yes. Hi, this is Mateo from Elvira Media on a recorded line here. Do you know who manages the video content marketing over at Branded by chance? Uh, no, but sorry, I gotta hop on another call. I'll, uh, I'll call you back. Sounds good. Appreciate your I'll talk about rejection, man. How many times have we gotten that objection so far? So many times. I would, in fact, maybe send an email instantly to these people just so we could stay on top of mind. Hey, I'm sorry I caught you before our meeting. This is what I wanted to discuss with you about. Would it make sense to chat further? I know your time is important. Something as simple as that, right? Speed to lead, speed to response. You can't beat that. And, like, again, if they're telling you, call me back. Call them back. They're telling you they're they're busy and they need to hop into a meeting. Send them an email immediately. Uh, being able to be on top of them like that could increase your chances of conversion and just people hearing you out. So let's go to the next call here. We are at fifty three eleven. So we have our second to last call here. Fifty four thirty two. Hi, this is Mateo from Elvira Media on Record Line here. Are you the best person to speak to about video content marketing by chance, Dwight? Yes, what's up? I just wanted to reach out. I was curious if you had like an in-house team or what the process looks like for repurposing video content on your social media platforms. Yeah, we just handle all that internally. Nice. Happy to hear it. I guess, have you found any specific video or social platforms that have been working well for you? Are you mostly on LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram? Oh, um, I guess mostly, uh, yeah, well, I'm, we've been actually doing some streams on Twitch and YouTube and oh, Facebook. Well. We've also been doing Twitch. YouTube videos. It's good to I know. I LinkedIn, but I'd like to start doing that. Um, is there a reason for the questions? Yeah, I just wanted to reach Amazing. out. We're a digital agency that focuses in creating and repurposing content on TikTok, YouTube, and multiple other platforms. I know that you mentioned Twitch. I've, that's really cool that you guys are on there. Have you considered repurposing any of that content on a fun platform like TikTok as well? Good question. Um, we have. Yeah, we've talked about it many times. Um, up to the audience, I think is is there, but that may be just an assumption. Regardless, though, I don't think we, this is something that we would ever. Have Sounds to a little about. sleepy. Um, we're basically an agency ourselves. And so, uh, maybe reaching out to something else. No worries. Do you mind if I ask how large the agency is, or I guess how large the content production team is? About 30 total, maybe about six of us working on I just keep like asking that. questions and he keeps uh, yeah, answering. That consists of like editors, repurposers, post creative strategists, or is there anyone else that you feel kind of falls in that team? Yeah, pretty much all that. But once you know, I think it's something we're going to be honest with. So I have to let you go. No worries. It'd be cool to at least send you an email on some platforms that we see a lot of easy ways to repurpose content on, like Twitch and YouTube, for example. Um, no, thank you. Well, I appreciate your time here, Dwight. Hope you have a great day. Thanks. At least it was really nice. Um, things to look out here. I just kept hounding him with questions. He kept answering them. 
but you could tell through his tone of voice that he really just wasn't in the mood or he was half asleep or needed some coffee. So being able to pick up on the tone of voice is really important and mirroring them as well. Obviously, there's not much I could do here, and he was really cool about it. And again, follow up with an email. See what they say. See if they open it. Gauge whether they open it, right? If I sent an email to all these people I've called so far, and I have see like one or two of them really engaging with that email, I might prioritize them too before I call anyone else. So we're headed to our last call here. This one was a very interesting one. It started really rocky, but it ended in a pretty good space. And I'm excited to share this with you guys. It's 10103. right now nice yeah it's an interesting world that we live in right now <laughs> i was unruly in kindergarten i that was my that was my second for what, for what company uh so I tools. then i became quite yeah. academic by first grade it's all sorted out hi this is mateo from a wire media on a recorded line here um, derek are you the best person to speak to about anything video content marketing related for for what um just repurposing yeah, content on sorry what? for what company uh you're with appstar still correct nope got it are you still i guess in a brand marketing role at the moment as well nope i didn't know Sorry, Glenn? I work for a roofing contractor now. Oh, nice. Did you start your own business? You're no longer with Aptair anymore? No, I work for a, a roofer. All right, do you I don't manage... know brand marketing. Got it. Is your role in marketing with the roofing company, though? If I say yes, does that mean you're sales pitch? Well, I just wanted to see how you are promoting the roofing company during COVID, did you? Yeah, digitally, we're doing pretty well. Nice. Have you guys considered playing around on any fun platforms like TikTok, or are you mostly on Instagram, I'm assuming? Yeah, we're, we're on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. All right. Um, yeah, we're, 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 we got it all under control. Very cool. Just I'm a big TikTok guy. What's been successful for you guys so far? Any trends that you've noticed? It's just one of my favorite platforms. I, 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 yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have time. I, personally, I have over 100 followers, so I'm doing all right. Got it. So, so that's your personal account, account. Derek. Oh. Oof. Interesting, right? Because he definitely was very standoffish in the beginning, but by continuing to ask him questions, he was kind of able to open up. And again, that information that we receive from a prospect is equally as valuable as securing next steps because then I can really fabricate a, a good story or a good reason to follow up with him. Hey, Derek, I know that you told me on our call last week that you just started on TikTok. Is there any way that we can support or amplify what you're currently doing? How much more powerful is that compared to just following up? following up to my last email, following up to a general email. And so this was really tough. As you could tell, cold call is like eating glass. There's no easy process to it. People are always going to be standoffish. It's what you make of it. It's what you receive from it. It's what you learn from it. And it's what you can take away from these calls that you can implement to your next set of cold calls. But that information, that practice, that insight is equally as valuable as the, the next steps that you secure. So I'm going to try to send some follow-up emails here from this list alone. If you guys have any feedback on how I can improve my technique or anything that you feel I did really good at or anything that you feel that I could tweak or just adjust ever so slightly, I definitely would appreciate any insight there. And again, thank you so much to Rev Garage and uh, Justin Michael here for the opportunity. And I hope you guys see value in the fact that I'm actually repurposing this piece of content. So you can actually watch the full episode on my YouTube channel, but I wanted to repurpose this content into like a react video as well. So anyways, let me know what y'all think. Have a great week and I'll talk to you soon.